the springtime, my draft number came up and I made arrangements to go to the, with, into the 10th Mountain Division as an instructor. Well, I got there and I started basic training and I only did a little bit of basic training because then I, and I started teaching rock climbing right away. And then, then they sent me to Mount Rainier in Washington to learn how to climb on ice because I knew I could teach rock climbing, of course, because I'd been doing it and they knew I could teach skiing. And, uh, but I had never climbed on ice, on glaciers. So we spent the summer in Mount Rainier climbing on, on glaciers up there. And that was a pretty good deal because it was, uh, we stayed at the hotel at Paradise Valley up there and, and spent the days climbing, climbing <laughs> on the ice. And then we came back, at the end of the summer came back, and then as soon as they started to get a little, little snow up on top of Vail Pass, and that was in September, uh, they told me to, to get a, collect a bunch of good skiers and teach them how to teach. So every day we used to drive up an old back road, an old mining road from Camp Hale to the top of Vail Pass. And uh, I started running these guys, teach, teaching them how to teach. And I had a two, three dozen as I remember. And uh, did that for a few days until we got too much snow, we couldn't drive up there anymore. And then by then we started to get snow at Camp Hale. And they had it at the end of the camp, there was a, one, it was a small slope there. And so then we, I moved over there and, and uh, ran the, uh, this teaching program on, uh, on this little slope at, right at Camp Hale. The Nuvas sta started up, this guy came to me, this Lieutenant Colonel came, and he said, I think I'd like to have you work for me during the maneuvers. And so we talked it over, and he, and I said, okay, I'll do that. Yeah, and he wanted me to do reconnaissance work during the maneuvers. And uh, I'd be working alone all night, every night, oh. running around to the hills up there. The maneuvers consisted of the whole camp, except for the little outfit I was in, the 85th Regiment. and. Uh, the, this, and, I, and this was the enemy detail. And uh, so I get up every, get out of my sleeping bag every evening, I go run around the hills between Tennessee Pass and uh, Mount, of, Mount, Mount Holy Cross and uh, doing reconnaissance work. And I did, did that for, I don't know how long, two, three, four weeks, I guess, I was doing that. Every night I'd be out all night. Oh, and I'd come back and I'd, we had tents, but the tents weren't any good. I always bit a lean-to. And I had to put the, open the tent up, threw it on top of the lean-to, and that kept the snow off. But, so I spent every night out there and running around the hills doing reconnaissance work. And then after, I can't remember two, three, four weeks uh, up there. Then they changed the whole operation to Vail. And uh, I remember I had to walk down from Tennessee Pass down to Vail, down to Camp Hale, and then walk from Camp Hale up the top of Vail Pass. Every night in the dark? No, I did that during the day when I was moved. And then I built built my lean-to up on top of Vail Pass, out in the trees there, and and. Uh, and we did the same thing there, and I'd go every night, I'd leave Vail Pass and go down to, into the hills between Vail Pass and Camp Hale, which is part of the, where the back bolts of uh, Vail Ski Area are now, and go down in there. And this is, you know, this is running around in deep snow all night, all night long. <laughs> and uh, then I'd come back and report in the morning and, and go eat a little bit and then go back to, in the, my lean to for the day, and that winter was a bad winter on, on temperatures. Every night, it was 30, it went to 30 below zero every night. And during the day, it only warmed up to about 15 or 20 below. And that was the way the whole la the last half of the winter was. It was that cold. And I was out all night long, all by myself, 
you know, every night, all winter, oh. running around those hills. Finally, I wore out. <laughs> and uh, I went into the hospital. I weighed 129 pounds. And I had 175 when I started. And I lost all that weight because I only ate two meals. I ate um, breakfast and, and dinner at night. No, nothing in the middle of the day or the middle of the night. Because I had sea, some ra sea rashes with me. And when it was lunchtime, which would be midnight about, uh, I couldn't eat them because they were frozen solid. <laughs> There were two guys, three of us would come to Aspen and ski in the weekends. And we stayed at the Hotel Jerome for 75 cents a night or a dollar a night, something like that. And we'd walk up the hill and they had one ski run that was there. They had the roach run was there and we'd walk up the hill and once or twice a day and then ski down and that was it. No lifts. <laughs> and I'd do that in the weekends and then once in a while I went to Winter Park once or twice. And then we skied on Berthoud Pass every once in a while. But mostly I tried to get to Aspen because we had a good place to stay. The hotel was nice. And uh, I went right to Aspen, went to work for the ski company in 1948. As a ski instructor? No, I went to work as a, a teaching tennis. Because I'd already <laughs> taught a lot of tennis in the summertime. I started teaching tennis when I was 14 years old. And so I went and I and I worked uh, teaching tennis and bartending at night and teaching tennis during the day. Went to work on the ski patrol on Aspen Mountain and stayed there for three, four years on patrol. Then went back to teaching again, taught for Friedel and Fred. And then they sold the ski school to, to uh, Buttermilk and then they quit the ski business, and then I started working as a supervisor in the ski school in Aspen, stayed there for years. Anyway, so that's about what happened. <laughs>